We've got the situation of a Maringer or Marigold round here and who's affecting whom. Kieran McKenna being one who may be staying now at the club and not going back to where he was a coach, both in the youth system and assistant coach to Mourinho and Rannick and Sosjaite, etc. But whoever United do get in, should they decide to get rid of Eric Ten Hag, there's this really interesting story in the Telegraph, John, about whether the whole sort of United and nice sort of situation might impact Manchester United in terms of which European competition they're playing, because of course both Manchester United and nice are at least part owned by Ineos. Yeah, it talks also about you really needing a sort of an independent panel to rule within the next week or so. So they have plans in place, really, and which team goes into which competition. And, you know, reading this, it looks as if if one team is going to miss out, then it's going to be Man United be relegated into the Conference League. But what I would say is that we have had similar, very similar cases in recent past. And I do think Brighton have ended up playing a Belgian team, you know, which Tony Bloom has got an interest in. We have got a similar prospect, perhaps with Girona next season. And also, what is it? Villa and a sort of Portuguese side entered the same competition this season. Just gone. So generally what I'm saying is a compromise is found. And I do think that the Ineos are very confident, actually, that they will find some sort of compromise in the ownership structure to detail a reason why that particular owners won't have too much controlling stake over one team as compared to the other, if you like. Generally, you find to find a way around it. And what I would say is that the noise is coming out in the recent past of UEFA, particularly Seferin himself, the president basically making it clear that, look, we have to move with the times. We have to be realistic. Multi-club ownership is the way forward for a lot of big businessmen, for a lot of big teams, and basically we will probably find a correction in the longer term, even if we have to find compromises. They've got about a week or so to convince UEFA. And I don't know, I bet that they will. I bet you will find that basic Man United, who are one of the biggest teams in the world, make absolutely no mistake about it, will be a very, very big draw into next season's world for UEFA competition, which includes a kind of a bit of a refamp and a bit of a new look for Europa League. And that's a competition that they will not want to lose Manchester United from. So my bet and my smart money, I bet we'll find that within the next week or so, they'll find some sort of compromise. Oh, how cynical I am. Yeah. And you've got to think that, you know, Manchester United, Brelsford, Radcliffe, etc, 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 must have thought about this, you know, when this whole thing came together. And let's stay with United and stay with the Telegraph for the moment, although the Mail are also covering this story. Return to office or quit. Radcliffe's ultimatum. I mean, Martin, this is, you know, this is interesting. The correspondence, the message that was sent to United's non-football staff, according to the piece from James Ducker, invited to give up their jobs in an email sent across the club yesterday. And look at this for the mail. United staff, Kyle, they're a little stronger on the headline here. Penny pinching Ratcliffe to cut a fifth of workforce. I mean, you know, they are so, so I suppose, very single-minded about how they are going about things at Old Trafford in all departments, aren't they? So I assume that wasn't open to Eric Ten Hag and his staff as a way to solve a problem that seemed to be mounting. It's very easy to cut the little man at the bottom, but they don't seem to be able to make the big decision about what happens to the man at the top. And if we are to believe what's happening, that a football club that was ready to get rid of Eric Ten Hag is changing its plans for the season based on one game, then I suggest getting rid of people who were keen on working from home might not be the revolutionary step that some of the fans wanted in terms of changing the way that club has success in the future. It always seems harsh. I think the Mail and certainly maybe The Guardian were saying, you may be talking about a 25% cut of the non-playing workforce. So this is people's livelihoods who earn nothing at all, like the players themselves and the management staff. And so these are life-changing decisions. But I think having read about this the last two or three months, this is kind of part of Ratcliffe's plan to streamline the non-playing side of the club to make sure that it runs a lot better. Maybe he's running that side of the business will help. But at the same time, you're talking about a ground and a first team and a manager that I think will take preference in terms of importance from all of the supporters. And we may well talk about whether Ten Hag stays or whether Thomas Tuchel has the experience to kind of oust him. But it's interesting that we're in the week after the FA Cup finals finished and nobody's still quite sure who's going to be in charge next season. And that isn't quite the dynamic. They have their new manager. Hey guys, welcome back on the channel. One Hour Sports here, as always, to keep you posted on the transfer market. Today, guys, many things to discuss. From Chelsea, here we go, for the manager. But not only here we go, also for Paris Saint-Germain, Santing or Rodrigo Gauche, and much more. Let's jump into it together. And so, guys, let me start today's video by mentioning some here we go, because it's been a move day with many things around Europe. 
And let me start with an exclusive news on Timo Werner, who is staying at Tottenham and will be Tottenham's first signing for the summer transfer window because the deal is done. It's signed from what I'm hearing, so the official statement will come soon. Maybe while you're watching this video will be already official or maybe on Wednesday, but the agreement is there between Tottenham and Red Bull Leipzig for Timo Werner to stay at the club. Tottenham will not trigger the buy option, 16 million euros included into the loan deal they agreed in January. So it's going to be a new deal and it's going to be a new loan for Timo Werner, who is staying at Tottenham on, on loan starting from now till July 2025. So one more season, also with Tottenham taking care of his salary. So Tottenham will pay the salary of Timo Werner and then they will have a buy option again in the summer 2025 for 15, 16 million euros. Timo Werner already said yes. He had a conversation with Ange Postacoglu, really excited and open, staying at Tottenham and doing great things for the future. And so Timo Werner will be Tottenham's first signing. But of course, guys, let me clarify that Tottenham are still looking at options in that position. Could be a new winger with Brian Gill expected to leave the club and also could be a new striker based on what Tottenham will decide to do. But there will be still movement in offensive positions for Tottenham. And so Timo Werner is staying at the club and here we go is also important and big. Here we go for Chelsea because they have their new manager, Enzo Maresca. De Fellas, I told you yesterday, don't care too much about the stories of Enzo Maresca. Maybe wanting to stay at Leicester, continuing his career there, because we had some kind of stories in the last 24, 48 hours. But Enzo Maresca always wanted to go to Chelsea. As I told you yesterday night in the video, it's going to happen, and now it's done. Enzo Maresca can be considered new Chelsea manager. Total agreement between Enzo Maresca and Chelsea on the contract, despite starting the conversations over a three-year deal or maybe two years with an option. So everything was around three years between Maresca and Chelsea over the weekend, and now they have agreed on a five-year contract. So Enzo Maresca will sign a contract valid until June 2029, five years at Chelsea, but also with an option to extend until June 2030. So potentially a six-year deal for Enzo Maresca at Chelsea. This is showing the excitement of Chelsea for Enzo Maresca. The conversations they had over the weekend were super positive. Then the board of Chelsea decided to fly to Marbella to meet with Enzo Maresca face to face. But talks were really, really positive. They believe he's a very talented coach. They like his ideas. They believe his obsession with possession to control the game, a dynamic manager, a modern manager, a young manager. All the skills I told you last week when Chelsea were discussing internally about the possibility to find Mauricio Pochettino they wanted that kind of coach. And here he is, Enzo Maresca. A five-year contract, also 5 million euros is going to be his salary at Chelsea, with some add-ons and also there is the staff, but around 5 million per season to Enzo Maresca. So the agreement with the manager is done. And then fellas, important to mention also on Enzo Maresca that now Chelsea and Leicester are closing in on the agreement for the compensation fee. Our information is that Chelsea will pay the compensation fee expected by Leicester, 8 million pounds. So we are around 10 million euros for Enzo Maresca, something also to pay for the staff. So they're finalizing these kind of details and then everything will be signed. Enzo Maresca will be new Chelsea manager. And as I told you fellas, remember that will be a busy summer because five is not only the contract years for Enzo Maresca, but also could be five signings in the summer for Chelsea, maybe less, maybe more. We will see based on what they will decide with the new manager, but for sure, Chelsea are looking at goalkeepers, looking at centre-backs. Could be one, could be two. We will see the movement around Chalabar in the summer transfer window. Chelsea are also looking at other positions, including a centre striker for sure, and also wingers. So Chelsea will be busy in several positions and keep an eye on new signings with Enzo Maresca now involved in the discussion with the board. And remember that Chelsea already completed a fantastic signing for the future. Here we go in this case. Estival William from Palmeiras who is joining Chelsea in 2025. Everything is being reviewed and signed with Palmeiras. So busy days at Chelsea but busy days around Europe because also Paris Saint-Germain have here we go now and it's for a new goalkeeper who will compete with Gigi Donnarumma for the first goalkeeper position. Of course Donnarumma remains a really important goalkeeper and crucial player for PSG. But meanwhile they have signed Seifanov, this Russian goalkeeper from Krasnodar. Agreement done for 20 million euros, add-ons included. Luis Campos was working on this deal for some time, months, and now the agreement is completed between PSG and Sefanov. Five-year contract, medical test also completed.
And now it's time for Sefanov to sign the contract as new Paris Saint-Germain player. So new goalkeeper for PSG, a really important move. They were looking for that position to cover in the summer. PSG will also be busy in the next days to replace Kylian Mbappe. We will see what they will do, whether they want to go for a winger, whether they want to go for a centre striker. So there are some things to discuss internally with Paris Saint-Germain. For sure, they like Keisha Koraskelia. It's really appreciated, but the intention of Napoli remains to keep the player at the club. So PSG are looking at several options. Let's see what's going to happen with that position. And then guys, I also wanted to mention in terms of other things happening, that Wednesday is going to be Hansi Flick day for Barcelona. He's already in the city ready to sign the contract on Wednesday. Two-year deal. So Hansi Flick can be considered new Barcelona manager. Meanwhile, Barca have agreed also terms of Zabs of Zabi Hernandez exit. So Xavi will not receive his full salary for the season, the upcoming season he had on his contract. Xavi will only receive 2.5 million euros, the money he paid to Al Sad to join Barcelona years ago, receive that money back. And then he will let Barcelona use the money of his salary for what they need. So again, super class act by Xavi, his staff will be paid as they deserve. And so this is the agreement between Barcelona and Xavi. Hansi Flick is signing tomorrow. Vincent Company is signing really soon as new buyer manager. Everything is done. Also in this case, let me clarify something on Real Madrid side, before the Champions League final on Rodrigo Gomez. Because today there was an interview around from Rodrigo. Someone was looking into his words, like he said, something like we never know what happens in the future or something like that. No fellas, I was checking about that. And I can guarantee that Rodrigo himself, his camp, all the people close to the player are only pointing to one direction. Rodrigo has no intention at all to leave Real Madrid. Rodrigo wants to stay. Rodrigo plans to stay. Rodrigo is only thinking about Real Madrid. He loves Real Madrid project. Also, people close to the player believe that Real Madrid project is absolutely the best in the world, also including new signings for next season. So there is absolutely no panic on Rodrigo's side, no intention to leave, to create any problem to the club. Rodrigo is only focused on Real Madrid. The message is really clear. And so nothing is happening there. Forget about Rodrigo being a topic for the summer transfer window. The player extended his contract already at the end of last year, 2023. It was a long-term contract with an important salary, but also Rodrigo is happy in general at Real Madrid. So they are not planning to change that. There is Endrick is joining Real Madrid in the summer transfer window from Palmeiras. And this remains something that Real Madrid want to make it happen. So forget about loan to Palmeiras or something like that. Endrick is a crucial part of Real Madrid project. Arda Guler is developing. Kylian Mbappe, we will be on it in the next days. So everything is going to the plan for Real Madrid. But Rodrigo Goyes is absolutely not planning to leave. And also despite all the rumors we always have about him, interest will always be there. But the player is fully focused on Real Madrid. And Real Madrid, from what I'm hearing, are also very happy with Rodrigo Goyes. And so fellas, let me know your thoughts on all these stories. Starting from the here we go for Enzo Maresca. How do you see him as new Chelsea manager? But also Rodrigo Goyes, what's your feeling on Real Madrid player? Also something to say fellas Safanov off to Paris Saint-Germain. What's your opinion on that one? Let me know here in comments. Remember to like this video. Turn on the notification bell. He wants to understand my United project. He's also about the manager. And so together with the club, they are waiting to see how to proceed. Hello fellas, welcome back on the channel One Hour Sport here, as always, to keep you posted on the transfer market. Busy day, busy hours, the Champions League final is coming, let's jump into it together. So fellas, let me start this busy busy day to many things, with many things to recap on the transfer market, because Daichi Kamada is going to Crystal Palace after being one step away from extending his contract with Lazio, he's going to Palace, the here we go is coming, and the here we go is expected to arrive soon. Also for one more Brazilian talent, in this case in England, West Ham are closing in on a deal for Luis Gilham, winger born in 2006, coming from Palmeiras, the same club of William Estevão, who is going to Chelsea, the same club of Endrick, who is going to Real Madrid. Luis Gilham is close to West Ham, 30 million euros, 20% sell on close, everything is ready, but on the documents for West Ham, it's important to arrive till the end and get the green light. Important days also for managers, Jose Mourinho is the new manager of Fenerbahce, the special one is back with a two-year contract option for further season, so welcome back to Jose Mourinho after Roma chapter, he's now the new manager of Fenerbahce, 
Antonio Conte is a here we go waiting to sign the contract, he's the new manager of Napoli, the agreement is verbally done, all documents are in place, and so three-year contract for Antonio Conte at Napoli, a massive massive one for the club, and so done deal for Conte as new Napoli manager. But let's enter into many of the topics we have to discuss today, and let me start with Manchester United, two topics I wanted to mention with you in this video. The first one is about the centre-backs, because we know that Manchester United are actually busy with centre-backs, they have several names in their shortlist, we know they appreciate Brantwaite, we know they appreciate Todebone, we know they appreciate Bremer for example, it. so there are several candidates for new Manchester United centre-back, but according to my information there, is also the concrete possibility for Manchester United to sign two centre-backs, because what we're hearing is that, in the recent days Manchester United also started inquiring for some left-footed centre-backs, so not only right-footed but could be also one more and could be left-footed, based on the outgoings, based on what they will decide to do in terms of budget, but Manchester United in the recent days have asked for left-footed centre-backs too, so keep an eye on this possibility for Manchester United to go for two centre-backs in the summer transfer window. When it's about left-footed we have to see who could be the candidates, for example I remember here on the channel, in October I told you that Gonzalo Inacio from Sporting is a player they've been following for a long time, Manchester United, Liverpool, get so let's see what's going to happen with the centre-backs, but Manchester United will be really busy on the market with that position. And in terms of Manchester United, I wanted to clarify something on Bruno Fernandes, guys. I can guarantee that the agent of Bruno Fernandes, Miguel Pino, I this week and in the recent days has been around Europe to meet with really important clubs and discuss about the general situation of his clients but also of Bruno Fernandes, obviously the most important one. We had some conversations at the moment we can't talk about negotiations but just to understand the situation around Bruno, because Bruno remains fully committed to Man United, really happy at Man United, he wants to win and his message to Man United was pretty clear. So Bruno's intention remains to win at Manchester United, but in order to make a final decision on his future he wants to understand the Man United project, he's also about the manager, and so together with the club they are waiting to see how to proceed. It doesn't mean that Bruno is leaving Man United, there is also the possibility to continue together, but at the moment what we can say is the reality facts, and the facts are that his agent was travelling around Europe to discuss also about Bruno with some important clubs. Now let's see what Man United will decide to do, what kind of project for the future they will present to Bruno, and we will understand more on his future really soon. Then guys, I wanted to mention something in terms of future also on Kylian Mbappé, because it's important to say that now we're entering into the Champions League final, and so for Real Madrid after the Champions League final it's going to be time to announce Kylian Mbappé. This is not new, we say that many many times, the idea of Real Madrid is to announce Kylian Mbappé next week. This is the plan of the club, it doesn't mean the presentation at the Bernabeu, it means the official announcement of Real Madrid, it's still a very important point, a crucial point, a crucial step. But this is the schedule, we wait for the final steps, and now we respect Real Madrid moment as they are fully focused on the Champions League final, but what's important to say is that Real Madrid are preparing everything, so next week will be Kylian Mbappé week. Ta we wait for the formal steps, we respect Real Madrid moment, but then the Kylian Mbappé story is pretty clear with Real Madrid already preparing for the big moment of the announcement on Real Madrid. Let me mention once again the situation of Luka Modric, because for Luka Modric it's going to be a special final at Wembley, but the intention of Luka Modric with his contract still expiring at the end of June is clear, I can confirm that. Luka Modric wants to stay at Real Madrid, Luka Modric wants to play at Real Madrid, and those close to the club and those close to the player are still convinced that they will continue together after the Wembley final. Still waiting for one final meeting to discuss the details of the contract, details is about the salary, details is about what they want to do in terms of the new structure of the contract, but the intention of Luka Modric is to continue at Real Madrid. To he already informed Real Madrid two weeks ago that he was going to reject important proposals to continue at Real Madrid, and so this remains the intention for Luka Modric, who is expected to meet with Real Madrid after the Champions League final to complete the agreement and continue together. Uh, let me also clarify that Modric's future didn't impact in any case the future of Tony Cruz, and Tony Cruz's future didn't impact the future of Luka Modric, so it was not linked to each other, it was two completely different situations, and now Tony Cruz is retiring. Uh, Luka Modric remains on his position with the intention to continue at Real Madrid. And to finish for today guys, let me touch also on Victor Osimhen, because we said Antonio Conte is going to be the new manager at Napoli, but it's really possible to see Victor Osimhen in the summer transfer window and Napoli going for a different striker. What about Osimhen? 
Let me clarify once again what I told you two days ago. Now Italian media are all reporting the same, but Chelsea have no intention to go for Victor Osimhen in the summer transfer window. This is what we gathered. Chelsea are informed on the release clause of Victor Osimhen. Chelsea have been showing interest in Osimhen in November, in December, but never been a possibility for Chelsea or any other club to sign Osimhen in the January transfer window. Also because he was in the AFCON and so fully focused on a national team, Napoli were never going to let him go in the January transfer window and... But let me clarify once again that Victor Osimhen, according to my information, as of today, then it might change during the summer, but is not the priority target for Chelsea as a striker, and is not even a negotiation at this point. Rumours of a swap deal. Osimhen and Lukaku were never something really considered by Chelsea. Chelsea want £38 million for Romelu Lukaku, and have no intention to negotiate for Victor Osimhen at this point for different reasons, but the idea at Chelsea is pretty clear. The expectation for Victor Osimhen is still to leave the club, so keep an eye on potentially other clubs interested in Osimhen. Let Arsenal work, they are discussing internally about the striker, considering all the options they have, and they will decide what they want to do also based on budget. Arsenal don't want to spend completely crazy money, they want to spend smart money on the striker, and so this is why Arsenal have not decided anything at all on Victor Osimhen or any other target, yet it will be soon. And so guys, let me know your thoughts on all these stories, starting from Victor Osimhen, where should he go? Mbappé to Real Madrid, we are almost there. Luka Modric staying at Real Madrid, what's your feeling? But also Bruno Fernandes, stay or go, what's your point of view? And also, who is the centre-back you want to see at Man United here? In comments like this video, turn on the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, see you soon.